Good afternoon, this is Jeff Copperthite from eSIMS Engineering. Welcome to a lesson on 4.3 from the IED curriculum, uh, Introduction to Engineering and Design. We're here, we're talking about motion in one dimension, uh, or one dimensional motion, uh, one motion, one direction. <laughs> um, in this assignment, we're going to be examining a couple of very uh, straightforward examples about uh, the terms, the kinematic terms, distance, displacement, speed, velocity, and acceleration. I'm going to put those words on the screen real fast, uh, just to illustrate or, or at least explain that these terms are very important for you to understand in order to, in order to do this assignment correctly. Just remember that displacement deals with a position change from the end, from the, from, for, yeah, from the beginning to the end. So uh, as an example, you know, your displacement as you go from your house to school uh, is going to be one amount, maybe 10, uh, maybe 10 miles, maybe five miles, maybe two miles. Uh, but then from your school to back to your house will be that same distance, right? But your total displacement would actually be zero because you started at your house and you ended at your house. So again, depending entirely on something called frame of reference, which actually distance would also utilize that frame of reference uh, in some way as well. So I want to put that on there too, just to remind you about that frame of reference. So for example, you need to know where the zero point is. So if the zero point is your house, right? And then your school is two miles away. Well, if you go from your house to school, that's going to be a two mile distance. And at the same time, it will be a two mile displacement, right? But then you're going from, Let's write that down. But then if you go from school to home, that's also two miles, right? So that means that your total distance is actually four miles. But what is your total displacement? Well, again, displacement is change in position. So since you started at home and ended at home, your total displacement is zero miles, okay? So the difference between dis distance and displacement, it deals with position change. Distance is sort of going from one point to the next point and then going to the next point, no matter what direction you're going in, right? So another way to look at it also is that distance deals with, sorry, distance does not deal with direction, whereas displacement does deal with direction. Okay, we have a term that we use in physics class to explain quantities that do this, where di where direction matters and where direction doesn't matter. Uh, we call displacement we call it a vector, and we call distance a scalar. Now, you won't hear those terms too much in the IED curriculum, but it nonetheless helps to understand. So when you it helps to make sense of this because when you see these later on in physics or principles of engineering or any other course you'll take in high school, you'll be familiar with these two terms right away. Now, velocity and speed are also kind of the same thing. Velocity is a rate of change of displacement. Speed is a rate of change of distance. Okay, so. Think of it as something over time, so a distance over time, right? So velocity and speed uh, have to deal with those. So in this case, velocity is displacement over time, whereas speed is distance over time. Okay, let's put an extra space in between those. So, yeah, there we go. So that's good. And just a reminder again, speed, velocity, one deals with direction, one does not. Speed, since speed is distance over time, speed is also a scalar. And where velocity deals with displacement, that is a vector. And the last term that you'll hear and see is acceleration. Okay, Acceleration, in physics and kinematics uh, standpoints, it actually deals with velocity. Okay, Velocity over time, um, which means that it actually is sort of a displacement over time over time. Okay, so we'll sometimes hear that referred to as a over seconds squared or over minutes squared or over hours squared, which would be really unusual. Most of the time you would hear that in per second squared um, as it is. But anyway, you'll hear those terms and see those terms in this activity, so it helps to make sure you understand those definitions. If you need more, of an exa more examples of this, I highly suggest you watch this describing motion video. This describing motion video is about six minutes long. It's available in your LMS, your uh, Canvas, um, not Canvas, I'm sorry, your Inkling uh, documents for you, to, uh, for you to watch. All right, but let's go ahead and look at the examples and watch how to do these problems. Now, after school, a student jogged, actually, let me grab my desktop tools real fast. Uh, desktop tools. Okay. That, nope, that's not my desktop tools. Sorry. No. Where did I do? Oh, there they are. That's a new page. 
There's my desktop tools. Okay. So here's the example. A student jogged from school to the library, took 35 minutes to get to the library, where he spent 10 minutes browsing, checking out a book, and then walked to a coffee shop on the same street in 15 minutes, spent 40 minutes sitting at a table in the coffee shop, reading a book before heading home. He walked home in 25 minutes and remained there until the next morning. So with that questions, with those questions asked, your, go your goal at number one is to use the distances in the diagram and draw what's called a motion graph along the street, which he begins by walking from school to library at t equals zero minutes. Show two and a half hours of time after he left school and be sure to include axis labels, scales, and units. All right, so this, this particular graph can be a little tricky for uh, some students to kind of understand and make sense of. So I want to give you a great example on how to do this graph by, uh, by basically doing the first half of the graph for you and showing you how it works. And then I'll let you fill in the rest of it. So I'm going to take a picture of this graph right here and we're going to grab this and we're going to put on a new page in my notepad and then we're going to go back to my notepad and we'll see that we have the graph right here okay so let's put this up here and let's make it a little bigger if we can yeah that'll work okay so we're, our goal is to basically uh, track the first half of this trip and you'll notice that the x-axis is time that's our independent variable in this case it's in minutes and then we are graphing the displacement not the distance the displacement, okay? So that means that if he goes from, uh, we're letting the zero point be, he starts at uh, after school. So he's starting at school, walked home, remained there till the next morning. So um, didn't get to the library. So he's starting at, at, at the school and then going home. Okay, so we're gonna consider school as the zero point. And that's important to know is what's your frame of reference. In this case, the frame of reference is gonna be the school. Actually, I'm gonna grab this picture too so I don't have to keep flip, flip, and flip flopping back and forth from this. So let's go ahead and grab this as a picture as well. Uh, change the size a little bit of that and current page. Okay, and there we go. That's going to and go back to our oops let's go back to our notepad there we go and that way we have this graph uh, kind of available to us so we can kind of go for that now let's change the size all right okay that'll work um okay so what we're going to do is we're just going to read the descri description and we're going to draw this graph so i'm going to use uh, the, my line tool actually to draw this graph and we'll do it in blue because i like blue and we'll start with this. Okay, so it took the student 35 minutes to get to the library, and this is from school. So he's jogging from school to the library. How you do that with a backpack, no idea. He must not have any homework. Let's just, let's assume he doesn't, right? So it takes him 35 minutes to go from school to the library. So here is, well, there are two things we need to know. Number one, where will, the, where will it start and where will it end? Well, we know the x-axis is going to go from 0 to 35. So this line that we draw is going to stop here at this x-axis. But the y-coordinate would be how far he is from school. So in this case, if he's going from school, and I'm flipping back and forth again, to the library, that's a distance of 1.2 plus 0.9, 2.1 miles. So we're going to start this line at 0, 0, and we are going to extend it to 2.1 miles. Uh, this is extended, this looks like it's in tenths, so we'll, uh, yeah, it's gonna be in tenths. So that is going to represent that first trip, okay? So it takes him 35 minutes to go from point A to point B, in this case from school to the library, okay? So that covers the first part of the trip. Now, he then spends 10 minutes browsing and checking out a book, right? So it has his displacement or distance moved change. Well, no, he's in the library, so he's actually staying put for 10 minutes. So how do we reflect that on a motion graph? Well, the way we do that is we actually, I'm gonna just change the color just so you can see the difference. We're actually going to keep the distance identical by not changing the Y coordinate, but do change the X coordinate. So since he's staying there for 10 minutes, we're going to start it at the same point we left off, but end it at this point, and just the way my software works, I have to start with the end point because I want to connect those points. So that's that, right? So there you go. That is from the library. He stays in the same spot for 10 minutes, so our graph would reflect that with a horizontal line. So if his displacement, displacement is not changing, then we do not change his Y coordinate on our motion graph. Now, He's going to walk, because he's tired from jogging, to the coffee shop, which is on the same street, in 15 minutes. So from the library to the coffee shop is a distance of 0.9 miles. But notice that he's going towards the school, right? So that means that when we graph this, his position is actually, his displacement is going to go 
down because he's going closer to the school. He's going to be a total of 1.2 miles from the school or 2.1 minus 0.9, which is 1.2 miles, right? So either way you look at it, then it takes 15 minutes for him to go that way, right? So if I change the color, let's go to orange and it takes him 15 minutes. That means that if he was at 45, now that's a total of one hour of walking, right? Uh, a total of one hour from since the time school ended and he's going point nine miles so he's going to end up at 1.2 which is you know 1.2 from school to coffee right so we're going to start here and we're going to go to here okay so that makes sense now again this is displacement how far is he from the school now you'll notice the distance that he has covered so far is more than than what it says in their displacement. Oh, he's only 1.2 miles from school. That doesn't mean he walked 1.2 miles. It actually means that he walked almost, actually a little over four miles, right? Um, no, no, I'm sorry, three miles, three miles to be exact, right? Because 2.1 plus 0.9 is three, right? So, um, so understand the difference between distance and displacement. Displacement is how far you are from something. Distance is how much distance have you covered regardless of what direction you've gone in, right? So. Continuing on, okay, so he says there, and, he's gonna spend, and this is where I'm going to stop, and I'll let you dra draw the rest of this graph on your own, okay, so I don't want to give you all the answers, but I've given you, obviously, a good starting point and a good level of understanding on this. He then's going to spend 40 minutes sitting at a table in the coffee shop reading a book, and then he's going to go home, all right? So I'm going to draw this one last line, and you'll notice I only have one line left to draw, right? So I'm going to let you cover that, okay? I've pretty much done that. 40 minutes for a, sitting at a table at the coffee shop, right? So it says, has, has his displacement changed? No but he will have spent 40 minutes at the coffee shop, okay? So our displacement's not gonna change, but our time is. So this line here, which I accidentally spit the same color. I thought I clicked the green. I must've clicked it before I clicked the line. Uh, draw that and a little bit off on there, but that's 60, 60 plus 40 is 100. So that's where he'll be on, let's just move that up just a little bit. Sorry, my OCD's kicking in. There we go, okay. And that basically is going to be the first four legs of the graph. And then you have one line left to draw. Hopefully you are drawing it mentally uh, on the screen. But again, I want to I give you all the answers, but I do want to give you a good starting point. Okay? So understand distance displacement. That's a good little motion graph of what his, uh, what his uh, uh, trip looks like. Okay? So we create the motion graph. We're going to answer the following questions. Okay? So using the motion graph, answer each of the following. What is the student's displacement after one and a half hours? Okay, well, one and a half hours is 90 minutes, right? So if you look at my graph, after 90 minutes, what is his displacement? Okay, so you just got to read the graph at that point. I'm not going to give you the answer. I'm assuming you know how to read a graph. Uh, total distance the student walked after an hour and a half. So again, I kind of gave you a clue earlier, right? Distance and displacement are not the same thing. So don't say the answer is not 1.2 miles. The answer is not 1.2 miles. If you were listening carefully, I already answered this question. You may have to rewind to see it. But again, you could hopefully be able to figure that out from that graph. Uh, what's the student's displacement after one hour and 50 minutes? Well, you're going to have to answer that after you do the graph. Plot that point and label it point C. Oh, and by the way, you've got to plot the point and label it point A from that 1.5 hours or 90 minutes. So I'll show you what they're kind of looking for here. So here's 1.5 hours, right? So that point right there, right? And that would be A. That's my mouse artwork right there. Not bad. Okay. Uh, total distance student walked when he, when he arrived home. You can kind of answer that same question in the same vein as um, uh, as the second part here. At what speed? Here's a good question. At what speed was the student walking 20 minutes after he left school? Great question. Okay. 20 minutes after he left school, how fast was he going? All right. Now, you remember from Algebra 1. This is an Algebra 1 question in disguise. Here's where he is 20 minutes after he leaves school. If this, if this is his displacement and speed is, sorry, distance, well, this is displacement, but if speed is distance divided by time, and since distance is the y-axis or change in y, divided by the change in x, that means that what you are really asked to find in this question is what is the slope? You are trying to figure out the slope. So if you are ever asked for a velocity, sorry, a speed, all you need to do is find the slope of the line at the traveling point. So for example, if I ask you for the velocity or speed at point A, 
what is the slope of a horizontal line? The answer is zero, right? Which means his velocity or his speed is zero. When you are finding the slope, if you are asked for speed and you were finding, say, the slope of this orange line, which has a negative slope, if you go from algebra one, since it's pointing down, the speed is still positive because speed does not take into account the direction you're going. However, if it's asking for velocity, that would be negative, okay? So get, again, kind of conventional stuff that you're gonna bump into eventually. All right, so uh, that's the speed question there. If home is due south, what is the velocity of the student at t equals 50 minutes? Give the magnitude of the velocity in miles per hour. Same kind of question. Use your motion graph. Find the slope of the line. If the line is pointing down, it's negative. If the line is pointing up, it's positive, okay? Nice and easy. Sorry, that's the school's bell. You can tell I'm recording this in school during my prep period. <laughs> and then what is the student's speed at t equals one hour? Same kind of question here. Just look at the graph. Where is he at 60 minutes afterward in this case? Ooh, good question. What is his speed at t equals one? So if he gets to the coffee shop and he's there at 60 minutes, is he going zero or is he not? The answer is he's going zero, okay? So if you're paying attention, get the question, answer that question, right? Okay, now, number three, more of the same thing, except this is a projectile motion displacement graph, right? So notice that it looks like an upside down curve. That's called a parabola. If you haven't taken algebra one yet, that's called a parabola. That means that the equation that would model this would be a quadratic, but that's neither here nor there. So using the motion graph, answer the following question, show your work, okay? So again, you're gonna ask kind of the same kind of questions. The displacement of the ball at t equals four, how far is it from the zero point, okay? So at t equals four, it's approximately 42, uh, 45 maybe, 42 feet, I would say, because this is 50, that's 45, that's about 42, 43 feet is good. Total distance that the ball's traveled at t equals three. So this is a little trickier, right? Because there's a point in this graph where it stops increasing and starts decreasing. And if you think about this, it makes sense because you throw a ball in the air, what goes up must come down, right? So at this point right here, this displacement starts decreasing, but the distance continues to increase. So give it your best estimate, okay? This distance traveled, if it goes from here to here, that's about eight feet, right? So if its maximum height was 85, 90 feet, that plus eight is gonna be 98, right? So it's just about that. Average speed between t equals zero and t equals two. So this time it's a point here and a point here, right? So just find the slope of the line that would create that point. The, the, uh, sorry, the line that would be created through those two points. Uh, same question here, average velocity t equals three and four, though this time you'll get something that's negative, but again, find the slope between these two points. And then how long did it take for the ball to return to its original height? So in other words, what's the value of the time right there? Okay, that pretty much answers that question. Now for number four, obviously it's up to your teacher what you're going to do, how long should your story be, but kind of similar to number one. So similar to number one. What are this, so this area right here, right? You wanna write a story kind of like that. Okay, you start here and I go this way and it takes me this long to get there. I stay there, there, and I go there. It's, it's obviously completely up to you how and what you would do for that story, but do the same motion graph from that case, okay? So that pretty much covers what you'd be doing in this activity, motion in one dimension. Be familiar with those terms, get used to using them because you're gonna see them a little bit in the next activity as well. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you've enjoyed this video, uh, I would love it if you would click that like button on this video. And I also would love it <laughs> when my bell rings in the middle of my talking. No, I also love it if you would subscribe to eSIMS Engineering and help support the channel uh, by doing that. That would be tremendous help.